Okay, what you're looking at is Shirley Jean. Poor baby. No, this is not a dog video. Go back to your your princess pad, baby. This is my 48 Crosley sedan. Oh, it would be pretty cool if she'd lay her. Yeah, but she won't. And this is the garage I built it in. That is another Crosley called a Hot Shot. It's going to be worked on one of these days because I need to get it finished so I can get the Cokes out of that Coke box. This is the messy garage. All sorts of stuff. There's my tool cabinet. There's my Crosley cabinet. Got a bunch of parts in there. And spilling out into the floor like any good cabinet. There is a table with the Crosley parts. Yes, that's license plates. Yes, they spell Jeep because I used to build Jeeps. Back before I got puny. And everything's hunky dory. That used to be a cabinet for army truck parts. It's still got army truck parts in it. And my desk is over there somewhere between the welders and the grinders and stuff. And I'm getting wrapped up in this math, this rascal. My brother let me have this camera. And I'm trying it out, by gosh. Lots of goofy stickers and signs. My idols. And the car plus the dog. Oh yeah, you want to go homewards. Cool. It's like 80 degrees here. And everybody else is getting snow and rain and stuff, but not here. I guess we're not paying the preacher enough. But let me set this goober thing down on the fan. Oh, ho! Bet that's sounding good. And I'm trying to wax out some overspray and rub out some overspray from the poor paint job I put on this thing. I didn't have $3,000 or $5,000 to paint it. So the car suffered from, from me not having the money, and so am I. But... It's a good supper. It had so much overspray on it that even the roughest rubbing compound that I had, of course I don't have a buffer or a polisher, I just have this. And this one's broke, crooked, but it's getting better. And this one here is overworked from having to do everything. And uh, had overspray all over it, on the top especially. And 
I'm a stickler for a top. The top is the first thing I see from a car. And this car had been hit by a tree right through here and crushed in. And I spent something like, I don't know, three months of hard labor beating the top out and metal finishing and filling and sanding and re-sanding and unsanding to get it like it is now. And I'm still not happy with it because I wanted it like glass. And one of my Crosley buddies, Barry Smedley, oh, I killed that name. Anyway, Cousin Barry, he said that they're bent from the factory. So they wasn't actually put together real well. And they had waves in them. And just to go ahead and paint it and start enjoying it. So that's kind of, I took his advice. And uh, I'm still enjoying it. But I did notice on his sedan, there weren't no dents on it. So I don't know if he was wanting to have a dentless sedan and me have a dents or not. I don't think he's that evil. I think he just wanted me to finish the car before I got tired and give up on it. Which is easy to do to people and me, some people. Uh, I bought another sedan from some good people in Iowa and it was damaged much like this one by a tree and after rubbing on this one for three or four months I wasn't ready to start on another top especially one that was caved in and it sat in the woods for 25 years and uh, water had gathered in the the little valley there, big valley, rubber stomach, and uh, it had rotted holes in it, in the top, so it kind of had its own sprinkler system when it rained. So, instead of working on it, I just cut the top off. I mean, right, you know, here. So it's convertible, and it saved me from having to do all this stuff. I dreaded it. I hate it. I hate cutting it off. I love sedans. I don't like convertibles. But I couldn't see spending half a year on the top when I could be finishing this up and. Uh, Maybe driving that one down the road with the top off convertible in parades and stuff. I see. I compounded that and I polished it and I put this good Maguire's on it and it's still good. Bit. I may have to get a buffer, buff this stuff out. I may have to borrow one. Can't buy one yet. That's just the pits there, boys. Oh. I got to show, I think Stone, you want, want to see this. Stoney's another one of my good buddies. Crosley buddies. He's building a 50 model sedan. And he wants to paint it light blue. And I found him some light blue acrylic enamel. I stirred it up with this and it's, I think it's beautiful. I painted the Jeep with another gallon of it. And I got a gallon left. So we're gonna get that to him. And he can make the world pretty. Uh, this car wouldn't be here had it not been for all my friends. Nearly all of them, every one of them, from the Crosley Club of America, USA America, 
there's like five or six different kinds and variations and spin-offs. They're all good. The boys I particularly hang with are going to have a, a national meet in Wausau, in Ohio. And I'm hoping to take my sainted wife up there and bore her to tears, which is her job since she married me. And I'm going to be knee deep in Crosley's and my friends. See what happens there. I'm all excited about that. Can't bring rhubarb because the feature car is Hot Shops. And Marianne and I own one that's finished a lot closer than that one. And we're going to put it in the back of the truck, haul it up there, and have fun with it. Now, if you all get excited about me waxing this thing about 10 more times, I would suggest, since I'm going to shut this off, that you go and put your head in the freezer and watch the ice cubes talk. Because it's about as exciting as watching me rub this thing. But, you know, I'm trying out this new camera. We'll see how it goes. Thank you for your time.